Alright guys, so he's doing it? CK here and welcome to the top 20 JDM and key cars I would like to see in Forza Horizon 3. So if you don't see a car which you guys want in the actual game then leave it in the comments section below and Playground Games might even see it. And also it's in no particular order just like the previous lists. So the first one is the Mazda RX-7 Spirit R. Now I know this is quite ironic considering the fact that it's a Gran Turismo picture. But this is one of my favourite JDM cars of all time. I think the guy's actually done a little bit of customization to it in this picture. But it looks very nice with that carbon bonnet and kind of like the front splitter as well. It's just a legend when it comes to the JDM scene. The RX-7 and the Spirit R only evolves it into an even bigger one because... It's such a good looking thing, it's a great handling car, I drove it way back in the Forza 4 days when it was a unicorn and I just managed to get it when Horizon 1 first came out in Forza 4 so I was driving that on the last days of Forza 4, it was a great send off to that game and I would love to see it come back into Horizon 3. Now I know we already have the 370Z in the game but it would be great to see the Nismo edition especially in this white with this rear spoiler. Oh it looks clean, it looks very clean indeed and I love the big dual exhaust pipes there. Oh it's good, very very nice back end on this thing. The front end is a wee bit, mm, it's, <laughs> you either love it or hate it if you know what I mean. I'm sure you guys have all seen it but yeah the back end on this thing is certainly fantastic. As you can see in this picture it would be a great car for drifting around the streets of like Surfers Paradise and stuff like that. Maybe even a little bit of the Outback, I'm not too sure. But for me I'd probably want to keep this thing running about Surfers Paradise, it seems that sort of car for the city drifting. And you've probably seen this coming from a mile away, the 2017 GTR. Now, I am a big fan of this car. I never used to be a massive fan of the R35. Doesn't mean I don't like it, but I love this one. I just love the redesign. Even though it's minor, it makes it look so much better in my opinion. I've drove it in Need for Speed 2015, but I am desperate for it to come into a Forza game. In this orange, it's okay, but I prefer it in either white, black, or blue. Because, oh yeah, in them colours it looks really good. The rims are nice, but the front end is just... It reminds me of the GTR concept that was in Gran Turismo, I believe. And sticking with Nissan right here, and also a GTR. Now, we've already got the R35, the R34, the R33, and the R32. So where's the R31 been? This is the one that I'm wanting right here. It is the Nissan Skyline GTSR R31. Now, I was Googling and everything to see if I can actually find like a proper GTR R31, but it's actually the GTS R31, so it's a great looking thing. I'm not too sure about the modifications on this one, it's the best picture I could get, but the rear end kind of reminds me of an Audi Quattro for some reason. It's just the tail lights. I don't know why, but it's the whole back end and it also looks a bit like a 90s M3 as well, just this R31 right here. Don't know why, but it's a stunning looking car. If it's done upright, personally I would customise this thing a little bit differently. Probably not with the carbon uh, carbon bonnet, but it, it generally looks okay. Would you guys make the actual customizations on this one? But yeah, complete the lineup, get the R31 in. Now this has to be one of the most underrated hot hatchbacks of all time. It's the Nissan Pulsar GTI R. Now, I know what you might be thinking from, from the side of this, it kind of looks like a Renault Clio back end. <laughs> it does kind of look like that, if you know what I mean, but this thing is apparently meant to be really, really wicked, because I know a couple of people which actually have had some of these. So, yeah, some, they've had more than one. So, yeah, this is a really clean looking black one, and I'm, I'm not too sure, I, I just wanted to include it just in case anyway, because it's not a bad Japanese hatchback, man. You don't really get many of them these days. And I know you would have killed me if I didn't put this on the list. The Nissan Silvia S14 or 200SX S14 or 240SX. I don't know. I prefer to call it the 200SX S14. So this is specifically the Rocket Bunny version. And considering the fact that Rocket Bunny and Liberty Walk are actually confirmed for Horizon 3, it would be blooming badass to have this thing in the game, especially with this cool looking Rocket Bunny body kit. It's freaking gorgeous. And the front end of this specific car actually has like a more muscle car sort of theme, if you know what I mean. So 
I'm sure you all know this one anyway because it's been around the internet for like a couple of years now. But yeah, I'm just really, really hyped to see what actually what cars we can actually put Rocket Bunny body kits on and everything. Because there's going to be a big selection. Now moving on to Toyota, and this is the FT1 concept. Now, a couple of weeks ago, I actually heard, I think it was on Fastlane Daily or something, that Toyota actually locked down the Supra name again. So you never know, there might be a brand new Supra on its way soon, based on this thing. But, I don't know, what do you guys make of the front end of this? I I'm kind of like, meh, from the side profile, I like it. But from bang on the front, I'm like, mm, not too sure about it. It is a stunning looking thing nonetheless, and it's that retractable rear spoiler. It is essentially a Supra of the future, but in my opinion, it's kind of like Toyota's LFA, even though Toyota owns Lexus. Now, this is one that I remembered way back from Dirt 3, I believe. It's the Mitsubishi Eclipse GT V6, and it's pretty good, man. There was a rally version of this in Dirt 3. Yeah, no figures. <laughs> But yeah, it really impressed me in that game, and I think it was a couple other games which had this in stock form, like the GTV6 Street version, as you can see right here. I like it, and I think we really do need this sort of body of Eclipse to come back to Forza. I'm not too sure if it's actually in it. I don't think it is, but yeah, can kind of one up it a little bit and bring in the GTV6, the, the banana mobile right here. And this is just for Top Gear flashbacks, the Mitsubishi Starion, or the wannabe DeLorean as I like to call it. Because it, you got to admit, it does have similar body styles to a DeLorean, and kind of like some old Supras as well. But it's got pop-ups, that's great, and it's got a really boxy style, which I kind of like. I really, really do like square cars and curvy cars. But you can see right here, he's getting sideways, but this thing was already in Forza Motorsport 4. And I was really sad when they took it out because it was a great car. One to go drifting and two to go racing. So now we move on to the fart cannons, I mean Hondas. <laughs> and we've got the CRZ Mugen or CRZ Mugen. Uh, this thing is not too bad man for a little hybrid car. It is pretty cool. I like how they've like incorporated hybrid with like sportiness and everything. I actually approve of the carbon hood on this thing. It looks carbon, it might be painted black, but I'm pretty sure it's carbon. The wheels are pretty good as well, and it's got a little rear spoiler on the back too. I believe it pumps out around about 200 horsepower, which is pretty crazy for a little thing like this, but I've seen a couple of CRZs actually driving around my area, and they're really nice looking cars in the flesh, but it'd be great to actually get this car back in the game again, because I do believe there was actually Mugen versions or like Mugen uh, aftermarket parts for the CRZ in Forza 4, so that'd be great to have that back. Then moving up to the CRZ's bigger brother, it is the 2015 Honda Civic Type R. I mean, the wing. <laughs> the wing is just why I want this, I'm only kidding, but yeah, apparently this is meant to be a really good hot hatchback. Not as good as the Ford Focus RS as we've seen on the new Top Gear. I'm a bigger fan of that than I am of this, but still, you, ca you cannot argue with a freaking Type R Civic. Do I think it's better than the EP3? No, I think that's one of the best generations of Honda Civic. The EK9 and the EP3 are two of my favourites, but in terms of looks alone, this thing is so aggressive. It's like a freaking little hot hatchback samurai. Yet again, for Top Gear flashbacks, we have the Subaru Impreza WRX STI Wagon. Now we are in Australia this time for Horizon and we need something to cope with the bumps of the Outback and I thought this would be absolutely perfect. I mean it's got tons of personality I think, I mean it's a freaking blooming station wagon with a freaking bonnet scoop. How cool is that? Seriously and it's got the, one of the best sounding engines. I just love Subaru engines man, sounds so good but this one in, in this colour I would probably make it the Subaru blue or like pure white, I'm not a big fan of the silver. But it doesn't look too shabby right there. It'd be an interesting choice. As I said, it's kind of like a wild card that I've flung in here. But hopefully they decide to actually bring it in because we need more wagons in general in Forza. And then the last of the kind of sporty cars on this list is the brand new Lexus GSF. Now, apparently Motor Trend are going to be doing a head-to-head -head feature in this thing. I don't know what the other car is. If you could let me know in the comments, guys, that would be great. But... Just from this shot, seeing it drifting, it looks freaking wicked. I mean, I love the ISF 
from a few years ago, but for styling wise, this is oh, kind of blows it out the door for me. It looks a lot more meaner, a lot more sharper, kind of like a Japanese BMW 7 Series like performance model. God, it looks good. It looks very good. I love the style of the lights and everything. And I'm presuming it's going to be kicking out over 500 horsepower. <laughs> I just want to get this thing sideways so much by just seeing this picture. But yeah, that was the last of the sporty cars on this, guys. Now we move on to the sort of compact, kind of key looking cars and everything. Kind of unique Japanese little sports cars and cars. And the first one that we see right here is the Suzuki Cappuccino, or the Baby Viper, as my friend Andy actually calls it. Because <laughs> you got to admit, it does look like a shrunk down Dodge Viper. <laughs> like the early 90s one. It's a stupid little car, this. I think it's only getting around about 600cc. But imagine fitting like a V8 into this. That would be so much fun. Sticking with Suzuki, we have got the Alto Turbo RS. Now, my mum actually had an Alto. Not this body style, because I believe it's only in Japan you can get this one. That is why I kind of want this, because the Alto that we have here doesn't even look anywhere near as cool as this. I mean, I love small cars just as much as I love big supercars and everything. And this looks great. It kind of reminds me of the Volkswagen Up GT. And I really hope they actually make that because I didn't think they I don't think they did. But this thing looks cool, kinda like the white and the red mirrors. It looks like a Fiat 500 of Barf colour scheme, if you know what I mean. But the rims are pretty cool as well. But yeah, the little turbo RS looks relatively cool. Um it's probably one of them cars which you could just take up like a proper twisty town and everything in Horizon 3. I wouldn't recommend it for like highway pulling or stuff like that. Just something with the small city streets. Now this is probably the most ideal picture to kind of convince Playground to bring this car in. It's on a beach. In the trailer there was a beach for Horizon 3. And we've got a Suzuki Samurai. <laughs> Hopefully it doesn't topple over though because as we've seen in many videos on the internet it likes to topple over. But the main reason why I'm bringing this in yet again for Top Gear flashbacks because James May actually drove one on I think it was the Bolivia special and I really want that to come into Horizon 3 just because it's so small and stupid. And speaking of small and stupid, <laughs> we've got the Daihatsu Midget. Oh man, oh man, oh man. This would be probably the greatest thing ever to come into Forza because I don't know what the engine capacity into this is, but it is very, very low. Very, very low. And I remember actually drifting this thing back on Gran Turismo 6. Probably one of the most fun things I have ever done, but Gran Turismo, in my opinion, isn't the greatest for drifting. So, oh, imagine this with freaking Horizon physics. Woo! And then maybe even an engine swap. I doubt you can shove a V8 into this thing, or you can shove it on the back little trailer bit and hook it up to all the electronics and stuff like that. After that, <laughs> that'd be mental, like a V8 midget. God damn. <laughs> so we've only got a couple of cars to go, guys, and this is a car that I've been wanting actually to be brought into a game apart from Gran Turismo for a long time. I've seen it on Jay Leno's garage. It is the Honda Z600 Coupe. It's either Z600 or Z800, but it's a really funky looking car. I mean, it looks like nothing else out there that I've seen. It's a really, really... I don't really know how to describe it. It's really unique. It's kind of got the, kinda like the, the shape of a peach. Especially in this car, it reminds me of a peach. I don't know why. I think I'm going crazy, but I like the back end on it. I like the side view as well, but yeah, it's kind of like an AMC Pacer, but if it was Japanese, if you know what I mean. That's just my opinion on it. Or maybe like a Fiat Sagento as well. Like, <laughs> the back end is the exact same, like, sort of lines as the Fiat Sagento or the Fiat 600 from the 90s. Now this one's actually a convertible, we don't have many convertibles in Forza, it is the little Honda Beat and you'll probably recognise like a theme going on with these cars, it's kind of low horsepower cars and stuff uh, with not a lot of engine capacity because I think sometimes these can make like the best fun cars in a game, seriously, I mean in Gran Turismo they're really fun to drive but I want to just fit big engines into them as I said before, be awesome to do that in Forza. I mean, I think the beat is rocking around about the same as the cappuccino, the Suzuki cappuccino, about 6,000, not 6,000, fuck, imagine that, 6,000 cc in a Honda beat, no, um, 600 cc, that's what I'm trying to say, but 
it doesn't look too bad. It's quite a quirky looking vehicle. It's not the best looking thing of all time. It's relatively good. And then for the last car, we have went for a classic. It is the Toyota 800 Sport, I believe it's called. I can't remember off the top of my head, but I love the color combination of this, like the black roof and just the red body. It's like a wee mini Toyota 2000 GT, as you can see behind it there. It's kind of like a wee mini version of that, mixed with like a, a Mazda Cosmo or something. Just kind of, it reminds me of a little bit of a Mazda Cosmo. Also, an old Alfa Zagato. So anyway guys, that is going to round it off today for the top 20 GDM and key cars I want in Forza Horizon 3. Let me know yours in the comments below if I've missed anything out. And also tweet this video to Playground Games as well so they can actually see the cars and maybe even add them into the game. Maybe not from the start, maybe in DLC, but... It'd be cool if they actually come in, so if you have enjoyed it guys, then a like is always appreciated, it just really supports me and it helps me out big time, thank you very much if you do do that, and also subscribe to the channel if you are brand new for more Forza Horizon 3 and Forza Horizon 3 content when the game actually drops, which I cannot wait for, I'm just dying for it here man, I'm absolutely dying for it, so yep, I'll see you in my next video guys, have a great Saturday night, peace.